Frank, Alberta is a coal mining town located within a treacherous stretch of land known as the Crow's Nest Pass. The town was founded in 1901 and named after founder Henry Frank of the Canadian American Coal and Coke Company. By 1903, the town's population had reached 600 people and featured a two-story school and four hotels. But as the town started to thrive, it sat beneath the ominous shadow of Turtle Mountain, which was long believed to be unstable. Local indigenous people refused to sleep in the mountain's vicinity and referred to it as the mountain that moves. In the weeks leading up to the disaster, miners felt rumbling from within the mountain and noted shifting rock, sometimes causing the support beams to crack and splinter. Pressure inside the mountain continued to build until April 1903, when the mountain suddenly gave way, burying part of the mining town of Frank and killing as many as 90 people, becoming Canada's deadliest landslide. At 4.10 a.m. on April 29, 1903, a section of the mountain 1,000 meters wide, 425 meters high, and 150 meters deep gave way, releasing 110 million tons of limestone rock, which cascaded down the side of Turtle Mountain. Traveling at speeds of 112 kilometers an hour, the debris rolled across the valley, obliterating the eastern edge of Frank, the Canadian Pacific Railway Line, and the coal mine. As the slide began, a freight train was slowly making its way down the mine to the town site. Hearing a deafening rumble behind them, the engineer threw the throttle to full speed, narrowly escaping across the bridge and to safety on the other side of the Crow's Nest River. Back at the mine, 17 men were trapped underground. After trying to dig their way through the blocked entrance, one miner suggested that he knew a seam of coal that reached the surface. Limited to working in pairs through a narrow tunnel, they dug through the coal for hours on end, even as the air around them became increasingly toxic. Man after man gave in to exhaustion, and by late the following afternoon, only three men had enough energy to continue digging. Miraculously, 13 hours after they were buried, they finally reached the surface, and all 17 men emerged safely from the mountain. But their initial joy of escape soon turned to sorrow as they discovered the devastation and tragedy that had befallen the town. The slide had buried buildings on the eastern edge of Frank, destroying seven cottages, several businesses, the cemetery, and all of the mine's operational buildings. The exact number of people killed by the slide is unclear. Around the time of the event, around 50 transients had been camped at the base of the mountain while looking for work. Some residents believe that they'd left shortly before the slide, but it's quite possible that they had stayed, which would significantly increase the total death toll. The number of dead is also uncertain because the bodies of most victims were never recovered and remain entombed beneath the rocks. Only 12 bodies were located immediately following the slide, with six additional victims unearthed in 1924 by crews building a new road through the debris. It's officially recorded that between 70 and 90 people lost their lives that morning, but the actual number could be much higher. It's believed that the Frank Slide was caused by a combination of factors, with the primary cause being the mountain's unstable formation. A layer of limestone rested on top of softer materials that after years of erosion resulted in a top-heavy, steep cliff. Melting snow combined with cracks in the mountain's eastern face and underground fissures allowed water into the mountain's core. The unusually warm winter that year saw warm days and cold nights, causing the water to freeze and thaw repeatedly, further weakening the mountain's supports. And on that fateful night, a sudden cold snap and rapid freezing resulted in the expansion of the fissures, finally causing the limestone to break free and tumble down the mountain. In the days following the slide, immediate attention was given to clearing the two kilometers of Canadian Pacific Railway track and the line was cleared and rebuilt within three weeks. The mine was also quickly reopened, even though rock continued to tumble down the mountain. Workers were able to open passageways to the old mine by May 30th. To their amazement, they discovered that one of the three horses who worked in the mine had survived for over a month underground by eating the bark off the timber supports and drinking from pools of water. 
but unfortunately the mule died when the rescuers overfed him on oats and brandy. Because of the enormity of the event and the poor means of communication in that era, numerous legends and misconceptions were spawned in the aftermath of the slide. One story claimed that the entire town of Frank had been buried, with treasure seekers believing that a branch of the Union Bank of Canada had been buried, along with $500,000 in funds. In actuality, the majority of the town, along with the bank, were untouched by the slide. However, it caused police to assign guards to the crews building the new roads, as it was believed that they could unearth the supposedly buried bank. Over the years, several people also claimed that they were the sole survivor of the slide, as it was said that an infant girl was the only living person from the town of Frank. Tales were told of her miraculous escape, that she was found in a bale of hay, lying on the rocks, under a collapsed roof of her house, or in the arms of her dead mother. This legend was somewhat rooted in truth, based primarily on the story of Marion Leach, who was thrown to safety landing in a bale of hay after the slide enveloped her home. But in truth, her sisters also survived and were found unharmed under a collapsed ceiling joist. However, her parents and four brothers died. Also influencing this story was the survival of two-year-old Gladys Ennis, who was found in the mud outside of her home. The last survivor of the slide, she died in 1995. In total, 23 people in the path of the slide survived, in addition to the 17 miners who escaped from the tunnels under Turtle Mountain. The slide has also become part of Canadian folklore, memorialized in songs such as a 1950s ballad by Ed McCurdy, the song How the Mountain Came Down by Stomp and Tom Connors. Over a hundred years later, the site of the slide has remained a popular tourist destination. Designated as a provincial historic site of Alberta, the Frank Slide Interpretive Centre sits within sight of the mountain and was opened in 1985 to teach visitors about the Frank Slide and the region's coal mining history. The town of Frank eventually recovered from the slide, growing to a population of a thousand people. Coal production at Frank peaked in 1910, but the mine was permanently closed in 1917 after it became unprofitable. Today, the town lives on and is home to about 200 people who live within view of the site of the disaster. And while rubble from the slide stretches across the floor of the pass, as far as the eye can see, geologists believe that another slide is inevitable, with the southmost peak of what was once Turtle Mountain likely to fall at some point in the future, potentially creating a slide about one-sixth the size of the original incident. The mountain is continuously monitored for changes in stability, with over 80 monitoring stations in place to act as an early warning system and hopefully prevent further tragedy.